Smart watches, a category of technology long relegated to the domain of science fiction that as of late has become a hip fashion accessory. From Wear OS to Tizen, I've worn pretty much the full spectrum over the years. But it wasn't until switching to my iPhone 13 mini, over a year ago now, that the final unexplored frontier of smartwatches was at last opened up, the Apple Watch. So today let's take a look and see if the most popular smartwatch in the world has truly earned that spot. The watch I have here is the Apple Watch Series 7, which, unless you need ovulation estimates or crash detection, is functionally identical to the latest and greatest Series 8. I sprung for the cheaper aluminum version, but just because it's aluminum doesn't mean that it isn't durable. It may not be stainless steel, but the 6000 series aluminum that Apple uses is still a pretty tough alloy. I've worn mine daily for the past roughly four months, and there isn't a single scratch on it yet. The starlight color is nice, and it looks a little less sterile than the pure silver would, and the tempered glass on the screen seems about as durable as tempered glass usually is. Now, I don't like that the screen isn't flat, because it means I can't put a glass screen protector on it. As someone who keeps their tech around for quite a few years, replacing an old screen protector with a fresh one is an easy way to make your old device feel like new. And I would have liked to see the regular Apple Watch adopt the flat screen design of the Apple Watch Ultra. Apple's proprietary watch band fixture is, well, proprietary, but at least it is an improvement over traditional watches in both durability and ease of use. And if you don't like it, adapters to make it work with standard watch bands are cheap and plentiful, so I can't really complain. Apple nailed the sizing here too. The 41mm size is perfect for those with noodle wrists like me, and after wearing my rather large and bulky Gear S3 around for years, this feels like a breath of fresh air. But what is it like to actually use the watch? If I had to describe it in as few words as possible, I would say it's well thought out. For inputs, we obviously have the touchscreen, the crown, and a button, and the crown is really the star of the show here. The bearings inside the crown must have been a nightmare to manufacture, because it turns so incredibly smoothly. There's no end play or slop whatsoever, and when it's paired with Apple's outstanding haptic feedback, it really feels great to use, and much better than a purely mechanical solution like my Gear S3's bezel ever has. Depending on what watch face you choose, when you raise your wrist, the watch will show you a series of what Apple calls complications, which is a fancy name for widgets. These can be customized to whatever you want, and there's no shortage of them. Pretty much whatever glanceable information you want to see can probably be displayed here. For me, this is time, date, outside temperature, battery status, daylight remaining, and fitness activity. None of this is really uncommon in smartwatches though, but where the experience starts to stand out is notifications. They come through as soon as they reach the phone with no delay at all, and the Apple Watch is really good at showing as much information about the notification as possible without you needing to interact with it. When a notification comes in, it's automatically maximized on screen when you raise your wrist, without needing to press or swipe on anything which is really nice. Apple's also spent quite a lot of time working to make the screen as large as possible. And while on video, the difference between this Series 7 here and an older Apple Watch may look subtle, it actually makes a pretty big difference in usability, especially when viewing large chunks of text. Notifications are stacked vertically above the watch face, and when you do interact with them, I like how large and defined each button is. It doesn't feel super fiddly like some other watches can. There's no shortage of third-party apps for the Apple Watch, and chances are, if there isn't an Apple Watch app for it, no smartwatch has an app for it. But honestly, other than Spotify, a speedometer, and maybe a package tracker, I just use the apps it came with. At the end of the day, it's a watch, and I don't think anybody's gonna Netflix and chill on their one-inch watch screen. Fitness, though, that they will do, and the Apple Watch will do it better than almost any other. Personally, I found the heart rate readings to be very consistent, the array of workouts you can track covers pretty much anything you can do, and the watch's ability to auto-detect workouts is, in my experience, second to none. And if it does manage to somehow erroneously record a workout, it's very easy to cancel out from the watch. I always hated climbing off my ATV while wearing my Gear S3 and finding it had recorded a 20 minute cycling session with no way to delete it from the watch. And that hasn't happened since switching to the Apple Watch. The activity rings absolutely live up to their hype and I really like that they'll track exercise even if it doesn't fall into a defined category. For instance, in the past, if I were to say spend half a day chopping wood 
or rearranging the house. Now, I burn the same amount of calories as if I did a moderate workout, but no other watch I've ever tried had a way of quantifying that. I'd finish doing some strenuous activity, then an hour later my watch would be prompting me to do a daily workout. The Apple Watch keeps track of all of this throughout the day, and it is wonderful to have a way of quantifying it all. The ability to take ECGs was cool for about 60 seconds. If you have a heart condition, I can certainly see how this could be game-changing. But for a young guy of 20-something, my ticker is barely broken in, so the novelty of the ECG feature wore off pretty quick. My biggest complaint with smartwatches is and has always been the battery life. My first smartwatch struggled to get through a single day, my Fitbit could survive a week, but it barely did anything, and the Gear S3 for me struck a balance between being full-featured while still lasting a solid three to four days per charge. The Apple Watch always gets through a day, but not much more. I find it averages about 36 hours with my usage before I need to put it on the charger, so if you're going away for a weekend trip, you're going to have to pack the charger, which is disappointing. This is offset somewhat by the introduction of fast charging with the Series 7. Apple claims it takes about 45 minutes to go from 0 to 80%, and I'd say that's about accurate. And it's way better than my Gear S3, which took roughly two hours to do the same. Apple Pay is here as well, and thankfully, many of the places I visit in my area are finally beginning to support NFC payments. But I do still miss Samsung Pay. Thanks to its magnetic secure transmission feature, I was able to pay with my watch at pretty much any store or gas pump, not just those that supported NFC, and it was so nice. While I doubt it'll ever happen, I would love it if Apple would implement MST into Apple Pay on future devices. Siri is here as well, for whatever that's worth. She's not the sharpest knife in the drawer as usual, but good for the occasional bit of math or unit conversion or maybe controlling a HomeKit device. And Really, that's the main features out of the way. There's a million other little things we could go over, like how my Mac can detect that I'm wearing a watch and automatically unlock without needing a password. But honestly, telling time, checking notifications, tracking fitness and mobile payments probably total 99% of what I use a smartwatch for. And the Apple Watch excels at all of them. If you have an iPhone, lead an active life, and want more features than a Fitbit, the Apple Watch really is the best option. But if you don't have an iPhone, and the popularity of the Apple Watch has you looking over the fence, know that it's not magic. When you get down to it, the Apple Watch does the smartwatch basics every bit as well as its competition, and then it throws in a huge array of niche features that will probably only appeal to a small group of users. Things like electrocardiograms are game-changing if you have a heart condition. GPS backtracking is game-changing if you take long hikes through unmarked woods. Fall detection can be game-changing if you're at risk of falling. But I'm not any of those things. And because of that, I've been well-served by other smartwatches, even when paired with an iPhone, for quite a few years now. But there are people out there that are some of those things. And if you are some of those things, or if you just want the tight-knit integration and ease of use that the Apple ecosystem offers, or if you just already have an iPhone. The Apple Watch is an excellent smartwatch. It's thoughtful interface, rock-solid hardware, proven track record for software updates, and good enough battery life make it easy to recommend if you're in the market for a smartwatch. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.